friends, welcome back to my channel and hi if you are new. Today I cannot wait to share with you two delicious recipes that I recently made and I have never done a bake with me video before and so I'm super excited to be only baking in this video. Definitely make sure that you hit the like button if you enjoy these kinds of videos and if you are new to my channel, make sure you hit the red subscribe button before you go. Let's go ahead and get baking. So the first recipe that I am sharing with you today are classic chocolate whoopie pies. These were absolutely delicious. And I will have both of these recipes linked in the description box so you don't have to remember any of the measurements or ingredients or anything like that. But I'm going ahead and starting out by preheating my oven to 400 degrees. And I did find this recipe, it's a Martha Stewart recipe. I did find it on Pinterest. Sometimes when I am in the mood to bake, I will scour a bunch of different places. I have several cookbooks. I have a Mary Berry cookbook. I have the Joanna Gaines cookbook. And sometimes I'll just look on Pinterest to find recipes that really speak to me. So that's where I got this one. But I'm starting out by putting butter and sugar in my mixer. And I did let the butter soften a little bit, get to room temperature before I put it in the mixer and then in this separate blue bowl here I'm putting all of my dry ingredients a pinch of salt and then the thing that makes these whoopie pies extra delicious is the cocoa powder and honestly these were so rich you could not eat more than one you can definitely make them different sizes but these were pretty good size I couldn't eat more than one at a time Whoopie pies are usually super fluffy and they definitely rise quite a bit and I could definitely tell that they were going to based on all of the baking powder and baking soda that I had to put in this recipe so it actually used both and I think that really helped to make these cookies extra fluffy. This mixer is honestly a lifesaver. It makes creaming butter and sugar together so easy. I just get to stand there and watch it, which is so nice. But I'm just creaming the butter and sugar together until they get all incorporated. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the egg and vanilla, and then we're gonna slowly add the dry ingredients to this mix. We used to be the team we will talk about what a chemistry. I can see it in your eyes. You don't wanna talk anymore. Another thing that I really love about having a stand mixer, and especially a stand mixer with this paddle attachment on it, it has a spatula on one side, and I feel like it makes the amount of times that I have to stop and scrape the bowl considerably less. I think I only usually have to do it one time, maybe twice, every time I bake, whereas if I was using a hand mixer or something like that, I would always have to stop and continuously scrape the bowl, so this is another great time saver.
go ahead and put the cookies on the cookie sheet using a one tablespoon cookie scoop. You could definitely change up the size of your cookies, just depends on your preference. I know I've seen mini whoopie pies before and I have seen ones that were way bigger than these, but I thought that this was the perfect size because you stick two cookies together and the cocoa powder just makes them super rich that I definitely couldn't eat more than one, so I thought that these were the perfect size. I'm gonna go ahead and pop them into the oven next. It's a little bit later now and the cookies have come out of the oven and they have totally cooled. You wanna make sure that they are fully cooled before you assemble them with the buttercream and that is what I'm getting started on right now. This buttercream was so simple to make and really delicious. Don't mean that I'm in love. I like you a lot, but you gotta step up. I'm through, trying to tell you what to do, how to make me fall for you. You should learn that on your own I play cool Cause I hope you pick it up soon And you know just what to do Don't you Boy, just be honest So much powdered sugar goes into this buttercream and then you definitely want to be very careful with the milk. Try not to add too much. You only really need a splash. So just kind of watch as you go to make sure that you don't let your buttercream get too thin. And then after the buttercream is done, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the cookies. And there's two different ways to do it. You can use a piping bag or you can just do what I did. Spoon a little bit on top of one cookie and stick the other two together. At first I thought I was gonna do the piping bag thing and I was like, nobody cares. They don't need to look that pretty. They tasted so good though. And you can see here they were the perfect size. I spared you the clip of me taking a bite of these whoopie pies, so you're just going to have to trust me that they were as delicious as they looked. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to recipe number two, which are three layer brownies. These are to die for. Trust me, they were a huge hit. I took them over to Jack's aunt's house. We had dinner over there the other night and everybody loved them. So the first thing that I am doing is melting my butter. Yes, you wanna melt your butter. And I think sometimes the best cookie recipe uses both kinds of sugar, white and brown sugar. I feel like it really makes the cookies extra super moist. Once you have added both sugars to the melted butter, you're gonna go ahead and cream those together in your mixture, and then you're gonna add your eggs and your vanilla, all of the other wet ingredients to the mixer. The 
next thing that you're gonna do is add your flour and you wanna add it slowly to the wet ingredients. So I just did it a little bit at a time here and then this is going to finish up the base for the brownie and you're gonna see what step comes next. going to add is your chocolate chips and you can either mix these in by hand or do what I did just kind of throw them in at the very end of the mixing just don't over mix it too much and then you're going to take the bowl off of your mixer and you are going to put it into your pan and you can use different size pans depending on how thick you want your brownies to be I decided to use like an 8 by 11 it's kind of a weird size you could use a 13 by 9 you could use a 9 by 9 if you wanted to it's really up to you depending on how thick you want them to be but I laid some parchment paper in there and sprayed the parchment paper because I wanted to be extra sure that they did not stick and I had to have Jack help me with this a little bit. This bowl gets really heavy too, especially when I'm trying to spatula with one hand, so he helped me hold the bowl. The next layer has to be my absolute favorite part. You are going to use Oreos. You could probably use other flavors of Oreos too if you really wanted to make them extra rich and extra special, but I just use regular Oreos for this, and you're going to put them in a grid pattern. I got four by six, I think, in my pan, but depending on what size you use, you might have a different amount of Oreos. You're just gonna gently stick them into the cookie dough bottom part just so that they don't go anywhere. With the skin next to mine In your lips I can fight But it's over now You brought out the best in me We had everything we needed You put me aside And turn out the lights For no reason What's it on make-believe once the Oreos are in, you are ready to move on to the top layer, and the top layer is the brownie layer. So I'm gonna start out by taking my chocolate chips and my butter, and I'm gonna melt this just a little bit. You don't wanna over melt it, just to kind of make a creamy consistency with the chocolate. <laughs> Once you're done melting your chocolate, you are going to mix in your mixer the eggs and the sugar, and then you're going to be slowly pouring in that chocolate mixture to make everything nice and creamy. No, I keep thinking, was I wasting my time, letting you into my life? Mm -hmm. You brought out the best in me, we had everything we needed, you put me aside and turned out the light. Once all the chocolate is poured in and you are ready to add your dry ingredients, and again, I always do this really slowly, that way the dry stuff doesn't just spray right out of my mixing bowl, so I'm just slowly adding in my flour, and then you're gonna use a little bit of cocoa powder in this one too. The last thing that you're gonna do is pour your brownie mixture over top of everything that you already have in your pan. And I did have to get a little bit of help for this one. The bowl is just super heavy when you have a bunch of stuff already in it.
I once felt I'm done with the defense Throw back and climb over your fence Hide to show, show you that I was a mess So you were shrugging your shoulders I'm closed off, that's what I told ya Soon enough, everything started to change Cause there's no going back no going back, there's no going back to your own life Not living in the past, we're over that I'm feeling it tonight, riding on the dizzying heights I wanted to make sure that I got all the brownie in the edges and everything. It makes it so much cleaner when you go to pull out the parchment paper later. But once everything was spread in the pan, I'm just gonna pop it in the oven and let it bake. And then when everything was finished, I pulled it out, sliced it, and this is what it looked like. You can clearly see all three layers. These were so delicious. It was soft on top, crunchy in the middle, and slightly soft on the bottom. This is the perfect dessert. But that is gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel with the bell turned on. That way you never miss a new video. And I'll see you guys again very soon with a brand new one. Bye guys. I'm feeling it tonight